and a good morning to you too. How are you doing? You okay? Welcome in for another vlog from myself, Darren, HGV Class 1 driver here in the UK. And unfortunately this morning, it's a wet one. And the time at the moment is currently 5.30 in the morning. And the first thing I need to do this morning is go brush my teeth over that way. Let's get a nice coffee for the road. After a night out, still do all your normal checks, making sure the fuel cap's nice and secure, it's not been tampered with. Normally, they either break off that or they break that section off as well to try and siphon your fuel. Uh, tire treads going to be all okay, check inside of the curtains. But then same on this side as well. Also, whilst you're checking your curtains, make sure there's no slices where someone's been trying to have a nosy, see what's inside your trailer. I am absolutely soaked. <laughs> from walking through from the services. It's not even coming down heavy, the rain is really fine. So you don't feel like it's raining, but your clothes just get absolutely soaking wet. I just need to wait for the air pressure to build up and to get it built up a little bit quicker, leave it in neutral like we are now. And if you're unsure how to get it back into neutral, if you are a new driver on your little gear stick, just push that in, that does it nice and easy. Over here on your cruise control section, this little button here, if you push it, it will increase the reps for you. So then you just leave it running like so. It only takes a couple of minutes when it's like that. Now the air pressure's more built up. What we need to do now is over here with the brakes, is push it back in. So now the brakes are released. And now we're ready to hit the road. To get back up to Warrington, I'm looking uh, about two and a half hours drive still. Or just over two hours. Oh God, it's still bumpy as hell on this bloody service station. It feels like when they redo some of these service stations, get them all modernized. Because they are going around, they are doing them. And they are making the toilet facilities, etc., a bit better. However, they do tend to forget about the truck parking area and they just leave them with craters looking like the surface of the moon don't they yeah, so car parks that way fuel and exit this way so they need to start throwing a bit more money into the parking areas for trucks as well making them a little bit more secure Fence them off a little bit better and then sort them. Rolled out. No well, suspensions that get damaged. Must be unreal. Biggest task of this morning though is going to be getting past Birmingham. Because we're still south of Birmingham at the moment. Just left Hopwater Services or the M42. So I'm just jumping back onto the M42 now. And then we're going to jump onto the M5 North, M6, straight up, hopefully, no problems. I say hopefully. <laughs> Just seeing a sign over the motorway bit, M6 northbound closed at junction 21 to 21A, which is the Fellwell Viaduct. So that's just gonna cause a massive backlog very shortly. Luckily though, I've got a load and go from St. Helens. So I can go down the M56, cut across Runcorn Bridge, and then cut through Witness to St. Helens that way. So hopefully I should be okay, but traffic is gonna be backlogged a lot if that part of the motorway is closed so everybody's probably going to be going the same way as I will be on a good note though my first job is not booked in till 12 o'clock and it's a load and go from St Helens now you're probably thinking well that's like four hours away four and a half hours away from now your first job booked in the reason why they've done that is because 
traffic on the M6 getting past Birmingham. I was south of Birmingham when I started this morning. There's no point making it too tight. So you might as well give it a little bit of leeway for a half hour or an hour or so. Traffic. Um, initially, I was going to be getting into St. Helens and then doing a trailer swap first. But with all the traffic going on at the moment with the M6 closure, there's no point trying to get a trailer swap done at St. Helens because the whole of Warrington is just going to be gridlocked because of this part of the motorway. Warrington becomes an absolute nightmare when there's anything wrong on the M6. The whole place just falls apart, it really does. So yeah, 12 o'clock, St. Helens, first job, not too bad. But I need to take a break before 12, so I'm gonna take 15 minutes at least by 11 o'clock maybe, if I don't get there in time anyway. M56, 10 minutes delay at the moment, it's saying. I think it's gonna be a little bit longer than that though. If the sun comes out, today will be quite a nice day then, wouldn't it? At least it's not too rushed around. Traffic is pretty much come to a halt right now. Currently doing eight miles per hour. And I'm approximately four miles away from Nutsford Junction. I'm not sure how far away Oxford Junction, Nova Scotia is by car, but it's about 2,721. No. <laughs> no, Siri. I don't want to drive in America. <laughs> 2,700 miles away. I don't think it is, bud. I think it's just up the road. <laughs> About three miles. Oh, that's the problem with this. On the steering wheel, it's got a certain button. So when I lean on the steering wheel, I keep knocking it. And um, Siri starts making his own um, things up, his own routes. I've spoke to Mike in the office, though. He has given me the heads up that they have reopened it. So hopefully this is just gonna be the backlog of the congestion, it'll start freeing up again shortly. And because I'm due to get to St. Helens in the next half, oh, about 40 minutes or so, um, they have got a trailer ready for a trailer swap at one of our clients. So I can get in and out straight to our yard drop it on the fence, get another empty, and then get to the St. Helens collection for 12 o'clock. So I've got plenty of time for it. Well, that just depends if the road clears up, up ahead. I don't know if you're gonna be able to hear me over the rain, but the M6 was still closed and it was all backed up. So I've come off at limb services managed to swing it over onto the M56 and I'll go, go to Darsbury, follow it down the Darsbury Expressway to Runcorn Bridge, get on the Runcorn Bridge, cross over and then cut through and witness to get to St. Helens. That should be alright. The time is currently half past eight and you can see it's very wet out there, a little bit of wind as well so with an empty trailer trailer you can feel a little bit of movement in it. Well it's just absolutely awful today isn't it the weather? It really is. Roll on the summer. Roll on that summer. It's absolutely miserable out there at the moment. So first thing I need to do get some waterproofs on. So I don't get too wet. <laughs> Luckily there's plenty of room in these as well to get changed which is always handy. Got my waterproof pants. They're going over first. I've done it in the past where I've only put the top on and then without realizing it, my pants got absolutely soaking wet. Get them right up there like Simon Cowell. Get my top on, just going like this. Oh, I thought I was done with using waterproofs, for being honest. I didn't think I'd be needing them much anymore. Let's stick. I want this finished now, I'm going to cut 
come down and call you, but it'll be out to the so you're probably better on the other side. Um, you need to do both sides, won't you? Yeah, well, what we normally do, go up this side, spin round and... Uh, yeah, I'll do that then, for you, mate. Nice one. Uh, I think you've got to hold two, two or three pallets. Yeah, uh, that's fine, that, mate. Cheers, Steve. So you switch it over to the other side of the road for them. Every time I get back in the cab, because I'm absolutely drenched because of this storm, I always keep an old towel in the top of here. So when it does rain and it's really bad, heavy, I don't want to get damp on the seats or the waterproofs as well. Because sometimes you might have a bit of water on and then you store them away for a couple of weeks or months sometimes, you won't need these out for. So it's always worth getting an old towel, just damp yourself down, so then the seat itself doesn't get wet. I know it looks a bit weird, toweling myself down with waterproofs on, but it's definitely worth it. So I don't want to get, like I say, damp anywhere on a wet seat, but it's always coming handy anyway, a spare towel, just an old one. But this is from like Cyprus or something five years ago. One of them cheap holiday ones. <laughs> Comes in handy though, comes in handy. It's definitely not fun when it's this wet outside. First thing you need to do, pull that little brake button, get a little less down. It's nothing worse than doing all this in the rain. <laughs> you got a laugh though, keeps you fresh, keeps you wet wide awake, doesn't it? Took a lot back in. Disconnect all the lines. So if you're looking at the word black, that's the B L A done. You're thinking, what's the C in the K? Well, I will show you that right now. Oh, I can't even use my gloves because they're that wet, so I need to buy some new waterproof ones. Because to be honest with you, I thought the winter weather was done with. <laughs> How wrong was I? We've got the clip, swing that up, pull that across, pull it out, and that's your black. Clipping the kingpin. And let's not forget the reg plate. <sighs> Just pulling up now to the collection in St. Helens, and this is going to be delivered directly to their client over in Wigan. So it's number 10. I've got it down for 26 pallets, but I don't know if it's gonna be a case of a full pallet or a full trailer load. So we just charge them 26 pallets, even if it might only say 10, 15 pallets. If it's gonna be a full trailer load, then they'll charge them for the full amount of the architect. There we go. So they do look a bit oversized ones. They're like giant glass. This does. So, straps are going to be coming right out. Now, normally, I'm always telling people, don't open both sides of the curtain on the trailer when there's a bit of wind out, because if you go like a ship sail, it's an absolute nightmare. Unfortunately, with this delivery right now, for a collection, I've got to open both sides, because I need to get straps around it, because this thing is pretty huge. <laughs> But later on, it's gonna be pretty difficult to get them too closed. As you can see at the moment, I've got them strapped down. I've got the straps strapped down as well and then wrapped around so they can't blow around and hit you in the head. So be careful, because these little buckles, they will fly around and hit you in the head if you're not careful. And these bars, they can swing up and then smash into the truck. So you have to be careful of that as well. Yep, that's what I'm collecting today. Yeah. So the straps came loose because of the wind. <laughs> This is the biggest thing I've had on the back of my truck before. Pretty big machine then, isn't it? Approaching the next delivery place, and I'm at the top end of Wigan at the moment. 
just gone past Wrightson Hospital. Just need to make sure I take it nice and wide. down here it is uh, hopefully should be able to find it it did say there's no signs up for the business but he said to look out for one of the other businesses that's next door to that one One and I out again tomorrow. Back down to London. Not too sure where about to London now I'm going. I think I'll be on the outskirts because it's only a 4 a.m. start. So going off that, I don't think it's gonna be anywhere too tight as well, or timed, I shall say. Let's take it on either side of the road a little bit, keep left indicator on. Big swing, oh my god. That's pretty tight, isn't it? <laughs> on that corner. Stay up there mate, stay up there. The trailer's cutting that corner a little bit. The piece of machinery as well, just picked up for them. 240 grand it is. <laughs> it's an expensive bit of equipment, that's for sure. Okay, so just come down a hill. Guys, okay, so it's on the left hand side. I think it was down this way. So just seen some guy then. I think he's from the place that I've got the collection from. We've got to get in here. Ah, oh, that was it. So it's near that cabinet masters. Oh my god. I think all you get is bigger up here. Please get bigger. <laughs> Some of the places that you got delivered to, though. It's nice and wide. Careful with tree branches as well. Ah, nice big yard, good. Good, 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 good. Sorry for the beeping, but I've not got my seatbelt on right now. <laughs> Just gonna move in left and right, looking at the mirrors. as well as it will be. We need to reverse it down that little section. Nice and slow A little bit of right turn. A little bit more left turn. this place isn't it? Just to make 
shows enough space as well for the port lift to get on either side. <coughs> well, can't claim a pro. Mate. It is now 10 to 4 and I'm just finishing up at Chorley. Heading back to the depot. I need to get some fuel on the way back though, so I'm ready for tomorrow. So I've got plenty of fuel in the tank. So I don't have to mess about first thing in the morning because we're going to London tomorrow. I think I've already mentioned that actually. But yeah, we're going to London. Still not too sure whereabouts in London I'm going. Whee! Oh god, tired today. Tells you that, lads. Tells you that. Bloody tired now. <laughs> I've not really had any coffee today. I've had a coffee this morning and that's about it today. Normally I'd have about three at least by now. Oh, I'm thinking whether to get another coffee on the way down or when I get to the depot I might. Try and get a little kettle on the go. Just need that little bit more coffee, I think. Nice on the way, bridge. Get weighed and then get home. Ashton is still got the roadworks on the go, and there's a lot of traffic to sit in on the way back. <laughs> there's Elios. Is that Jeff, I think? Yeah, Jeff. I'll wait for these roadworks to be finished anyway. It's causing chaos around this area. It really is, and I'm going to sit in all of this. Time is now half past four, so it'll be about five o'clock by the time I get out of the yard. After being unloaded, then I've got to get back to Haydock. Probably half five, realistically. Maybe six o'clock finish. Backing up four o'clock tomorrow morning, ten hours later. It's not a lot of uh, time off, is it? But last night was about 13 hours, so that was okay. It wasn't too bad. Nice early finish yesterday, wasn't it? Which means tomorrow could be the same, really. Don't want really to work until eight o'clock at night, that's for sure. Just going around this way, uh, flash them through, go straight down. Luckily there wasn't a queue when I got back, so straight into the warehouse to get tipped off. It's currently 10 to 5 at the moment. Get back to through Ashton to the Arbor Rover Depot, finish off half five. Not bad. So I am going to leave the video there for today. If you did enjoy it, don't forget that like, comment, subscribe as always. And a big thank you for everybody who does watch these because it really does mean a lot as well, especially when you hit that like button. Wink, wink. <laughs> but honestly, um, thank you for watching it. I really do appreciate it, all the support and everything. So thank you very much. And I'll see you again next time. Take care, yourself. Bye for now.